is Monday, and that means it's time to talk to a local veterinarian. Dr. Joel Kahn from Pismo Beach Veterinary Clinic joins us this morning, and we are talking about pet allergies today. Not just people right. have to worry about this. Itchy pets. So uh, one of the things that, that I find a lot, I uh, have clients that come in, they come in for vaccines or that kind of thing, and they just mention in passing, you know, my pet's really itchy, not realizing that that actually is not normal. Hmm. Um, and, you know, this is a, is a climate that we live in that just lends itself to allergies. Okay. And so, you know, there's lots that we can do and a lot of things that you can do at home, very simply, to, to help control those things. Okay. So, you know, one of the things we look at is kind of, you know, what are the signs that your pet might have allergies? And, of course, itchiness, frequent scratching, licking, chewing, chewing of the paws. Mm -hmm. Dogs especially, they're not, they're not groomers in the way that cats are. So if they're chewing nonstop, something's going on. Okay. That's not normal. Um, hives or rashes certainly is, was, is one indication. Skin infections, hair loss, runny eyes, runny nose, and actually uh, ear infections often tie into this mm. as well. Okay. Very common causes uh, are caused by allergies. So when we were kind of looking at this and, and trying to figure out what's going on with an animal, it's important to identify what is the source of the allergy. Okay. And the biggest one, 95% of animals are affected, is flea allergies, mm -hmm. believe it or not. And Andrew was just asking me in the break, he has a kitty that has a, a, some itchiness over mm -hmm. her tail. Um, well, allergies have a pretty specific distribution. Where the animal is itchy makes a difference and helps us to determine what can be the cause. Okay. And very classically, flea allergies cause itchiness around the tail base, the groin, the thighs, kind of the back end, mm. the back half of the animal. Um, and even if you don't see a flea, uh, that could still be part of the, part of the problem. Okay. Food allergies and environmental allergies tend to be paw chewing, ear infections, lickings of the kind of the fronts of the elbow and the front legs, mm -hmm. sometimes the flanks, it tends to be more front end of the dog. Okay. Hmm. And so that can sometimes tell, give you a little indication of what your pet may be dealing with. It's mm -hmm. uh, something you can even figure out at home. Here's a classic example of a severe flea allergy dermatitis. Mm -hmm. Very rarely do we see pets in this mm -hmm. condition. I mean, this is an animal that's been untreated for a long time. Mm -hmm. This is more of a food or environmental allergy. It's more along the front of the dog, along the face, the eyes, this is a dog that's rubbing its face on the ground and, mm. and rubbing, its, uh, uh, rubbing its eyes. This is a dog that's chewing on the bottoms of its paw. So this dog's probably picking up its paw and gnawing and gnawing and gnawing. Mm -hmm. And you can see how red it is between those pads. Mm. Here's a pretty classic ear mm. infection. Not something you necessarily want to see over your breakfast, no. but um, <laughs> very red, inflamed, crusty, dry. Uh, again, tends to be more associated with food allergies and environmental allergies. Okay. Um, so those are kind of the top three things, fleas, food, and environment. Mm -hmm. And what we know is that there is a threshold effect. So if your pet gets itchy here and it has a little bit of food allergies, it has a little bit of environmental allergies, but then gets a flea bite, mm -hmm. suddenly you're seeing itchiness. Okay. So it's not that we have to completely eliminate all allergies, we just have to get them below their itchiness threshold. Okay. And we, were, we were talking about prevention in regards to, you know, I use like a, a front line and you were saying that there's there's a difference between these things and I could actually get something that might help my cat. Right, so the first thing is we would love it if every owner had their pet on flea control and every mm -hmm. pet in the household on flea control year round. Mm -hmm. So if you can do that, you're ahead of the game. And keep in mind, if you have one animal in the house that's not on flea control, mm -hmm you're wasting your time because the fleas are going to come in through that chink in the armor. Mm -hmm. um, but the speed of kill of the, you know, so if you are doing flea control consistently, that doesn't necessarily mean your flea has a bubble, or, uh, your pet has a bubble around it protecting it from fleas. Mm -hmm. Fleas are still going to jump on. We know this, especially mm -hmm. in this area. It's one of the worst areas I've ever lived in for fleas. Okay. Um, they're year round. Mm -hmm. They'll still jump on and they start biting in about two minutes and they'll bite till they die. Okay. Frontline takes 12 to 24 hours to kill a flea. There are some newer generation products that can take only two to six hours to kill a flea. Okay. So if they're biting for that many less hours, that can make a difference because it's the flea saliva that dogs are allergic to. Okay. Here's a couple of things. We talked about flea control. I don't want to harp on that too much, uh, but we do think it's very important. Antihistamines, things like Claritin, Zyrtec, mm -hmm. Benadryl, Chlorpheniramine, all these over-the-counter antihistamines, mm -hmm. Check with your veterinarian regarding a dosage, mm -hmm. but they can be very helpful. And again, these are more preventative. Okay. Once the pet's really itchy, they don't work as well. Mm -hmm. So I think of flea control, I think of antihistamines as preventing that allergy. Mm -hmm. Omega-3 fatty acids, fish oil supplements. We mm -hmm. stay away from the uh, plant-based supplements like flaxseed oil. Dogs don't absorb those well. Okay. Medicated shampoos, cutting down on some of the surface bacteria. Mm -hmm. You're saying your cat's very scaly, so exfoliating some of that dead skin. Okay. Uh, there are some shampoos that can help with that, and of course, special diets. Mm -hmm. 
things. Now, I did have a question. Uh, you had mentioned the Zyrtec, the Claritin, those mm -hmm. over-the-counter. Uh, my dog will occasionally get the hives, uh, some sort of uh, environmental allergy that he yeah. has. We still haven't figured out exactly what it is that causes it, just on occasion. We were given an over-the-counter through the vet, but she did mention we could use those. What is the dosage if, if mm -hmm. you have a pet and you're looking at, uh, you know, age usually is the range for people. Uh -huh. What is the dosage? What is a safe dosage It's for based a pet? on body size. Okay. So your typical anywhere from five five to 30 pound dog mm -hmm. is going to be getting basically the human dose, so okay. one pill once a day with, okay. with Claritin or Zyrtec. Mm -hmm. The second generation uh, antihistamines, Claritin and Zyrtec, are once a day. The first generations, like Benadryl, Chlorpheniramine, tend to be twice a day, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of those are, are dosed uh, similarly. Believe it or not, most pets, even small pets, end up taking the human dose, but check with your veterinarian. It's okay. weight-related. Okay, so, so yeah, important you can to make sure that you mm -hmm. know exactly what you should be giving exactly. your the dosage. Okay, well, very good. Thank you, yeah, as always, welcome. for joining very us good, this sir. morning. Thank you, sir. Yes. Sir. And if you do have a question about your pet's health, you can email it to askthevet at kcoy.com. And we want to thank you again, Dr. Joel Kahn, for joining us on this Monday morning.